assalamu alaikum students today our topic is hypothesis testing in this lecture we will discuss six steps of hypothesis testing first of all we will discuss what is the hypothesis testing hypothesis a statement about a population parameter subject to verification the terms hypothesis testing and testing a hypothesis are used interchangeably Hypothesis testing starts with a statement or assumption about a population parameter such as the population mean the statement is referred to as a hypothesis for example if i want to research about a population so i cannot take whole population because population is very vast so i use a procedure Uh, or create assumption or hypothesis uh, about population and i take a decision um, i should for example i should ex uh, accept it or reject it so i will take that uh, decision about population on the basis of sample data um, for example i research on covid so i will do some testing and that is called hypothesis testing so here is an example uh, monthly commission of sales associates in retail electronic stores such as abc is 2000 so here we will take uh, population mean is equal to 2000 so uh, it is not possible to uh, contact all abc sales associates to determine population because we cannot manage time and cost uh, interviewing every abc so uh, here population mean is equal to 2000 and we will compare this mean with sample mean to test the validity of the hypothesis mu is equal to 2000 dollar 2000 we must select a sample from the population of all abc electronic sales associate so here we will Uh, select a sample from all population and calculate sample stat uh, statistics and based on certain decision rules reject or fail to reject the hypothesis so uh, through uh, sample statistic we will get uh, sample mean which is equal to 1000 and uh, our population mean is equal to 2000 so here is hell difference between um, sample mean and population mean so uh, we will reject the hypothesis um, because results are different whoever suppose the sample mean is is dollar 1995 uh, can we attribute the dollar 5 difference between uh, 1995 and 2000 so uh, if our uh, sample mean is equal to 1995 and our uh, population mean is equal to 2000 Mm, so uh, the difference between uh, sample mean and population mean is equal to dollar five, and uh, that is called our sampling error. So dollar five is our sampling error, or is the difference of dollar five statistically significant? Next is uh, six step procedure for testing a hypothesis. Um, first of all we will uh, see null and alternative hypothesis uh, null mean uh, zero initial fresh prior information um, for example step 1 state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis the first step is to state the hypothesis being tested it is called a null hypothesis as i said in previous slide null mean zero initial or your information designated h not and d h sub 0 the capital letter h stands for hypothesis and the subscript 0 implies no difference there is usually a not or a no term in the null hypothesis meaning that there is no change so um, in null hypothesis there is no change for example the null hypothesis that the mean number of miles driven on the steel belted tire is not different from 60000 it means that our mu is equal to 60000 the null hypothesis would be written as h not 
mu is equal to 60,000. And uh, uh, remember that uh, always, always in null hypothesis, uh, we will use equality sign. And uh, in alternative, uh, we will use unequality sign. Null hypothesis, a statement about the value of population parameter developed for the purpose of testing numerical evidence. So here is numerical um, evidence which is equal to mu is equal to 60,000. Alternative hypothesis describe what you will conclude if you reject the null hypothesis. If we will reject the null hypothesis, automatically we will accept our alternative hypothesis. It is written H1 and is read H sub 1. It is also referred to as the research hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is accepted if sample data provide us with enough statistical evidence that the null hypothesis is false. So we will accept our um, alternative hypothesis uh, if uh, uh, sample data provide us uh, statistical evidence and we will uh, reject our null hypothesis. Important things to remember about um, alternative hypothesis and uh, null hypothesis. Uh, H0 null hypothesis, uh, it shows null hypothesis and H1 shows alternative hypothesis. H0 and H1 are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. H0 is always presumed to be true. H1 has the burden of proof and a random sample and is used to reject H0. If we conclude don't reject H0, it means that we accept H0. This doesn't necessarily mean that the null hypothesis is true. If only suggests that there is not sufficient evidence to reject H0. Rejecting the null hypothesis then suggests that the alternative hypothesis may be true. So when we will reject our null hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis will be accept and uh, it will be true. Equality sign is always a part of null hypothesis. So in null hypothesis we will use equal sign, greater than equal sign and less than equal sign. And in alternative hypothesis, we will use less than sign and greater than sign. For example, a recent article indicated the mean age of US commercial uh, craft is 15 years. So here our null hypothesis will be mu equal to 15 and our alternative hypothesis will be mu doesn't equal to 15. So, uh, if our alternative hypothesis statement is not true, is not true mean mu doesn't equal to 15. And our null hypothesis always contain the second step is select a level of significance. We called it power of the test and we denote it alpha. The probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true we also called it type 1 error. Error means mistake, biasness. When we do um, and uh, we denote it uh, with the alpha and sometimes called it the level of risk, maybe a more appropriate term because it is a risk you take of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is really true. So here a uh, question arises that why we called it level of risk. When we do research and we have data and we find out our conclusion, first we do experiment and after that we do analysis. So we make an assumption of null and alternative as I said in previous slide. For example, I can say that vaccine has no effect on a patient. So my null hypothesis will be mu is equal to zero. And uh, my alternative hypothesis will be when I will say that um, vaccine has effect on a patient. So uh, it will be equal mu doesn't equal to zero. And my uh, alternative hypothesis will be mu doesn't equal to zero. 
so my prior information that is vaccine has no effect on a patient was actually true but uh, it but we reject it when we reject our null hypothesis which is actually true that is called our type 1 error one thing is correct but you reject it that is called type 1 error and next is there is no one level of significance that is applied to all tests a decision is made to use the 0.05 level 0.01 level and 0.10 level so um, uh, alpha will be 5% 1% and 10% standard is 100 so from 100 1% 5% and 10% is error as i said in previous slide error mean is uh, mistake from 100 1% is mistake and due to one mistake we reject our null hypothesis so this is very strong information and swear information because you reject uh, one person only for one mistake on other side you can see that from 100 10% are mistakes and due to 10 mistakes uh, we reject our null hypothesis and this is very weak information because uh, you reject a person due to 10 mistakes and uh, so uh, 1% alpha uh, strong information and 5% alpha will be uh, moderate and 10% will be uh, weak information because uh, one only one mistake when when you reject a person only one uh, mistake so uh, this is very severe mistake and this is, this will be strong alpha so 1% is strong alpha 5% is moderate alpha and 10% is weak alpha traditionally the 0.05 level is selected for consumer search projects and 0.01 for quality assurance and 0.10 for political polling the other possible error in hypothesis testing is called type 2 error the probability of committing a type 2 error is designated by the gray letter beta so um, we will denote type 2 error with beta and we will denote type 1 error with alpha type 2 error not rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false so this is very severe mistake because uh, i know well uh, if a person uh, a person is wrong and i accept him that is um, severe mistake and we called it type 2 error so in type 1 error uh, we reject our h not uh, our null hypothesis uh, while we know that uh, our null hypothesis is true and in type 2 error we uh, accept our null hypothesis when we know that our uh, null hypothesis is false so uh, this is a difference between type 1 error and type 2 error so here question arise that um, type 1 error is swear mistake or type 2 error is swear mistake so here uh, type 2 error will be swear mistake because uh, we accept a person uh, which is actually wrong but uh, we uh, we are going to accept him and this is called type error and this is swear mistake in step 3 we will compute the value of test statistic uh, a value determined from sample information used to determine whether to reject the null hypothesis or accept in hypothesis testing for the mean mu when sigma is known the test statistic z is computed by this formula So z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over under root n. So by substituting the values of x bar, mu, sigma, 
and sample size we will uh, calculate the value of z z value is based on the sampling distribution of x which follows a uh, normal distribution with uh, with the mean mu x bar equal to mu and standard deviation sigma x bar which is equal to sigma over under root n so uh, we will compare the value uh, the computed value with critical value and when we will uh, compare both values uh, we will we will determine uh, that uh, uh, whether we reject our null hypothesis or accept Hence, we can determine whether the difference between x and mu is statistically significant by finding the number of standard deviation x is from mu using formula. So, by using this formula, we will uh, compute the value of c and we will compare this value with critical value. And this is the step 4. Formulate the decision rule. Our decision rule is a statement of the specific condition under which the null hypothesis is rejected and the condition under which it is not rejected. So uh, you can see that in this figure we are taking 5% uh, level of significance. So here sampling error is equal to 5% and uh, uh, here we are taking one tail test and the value uh, when we see the value uh, 0 point alpha 0 0.05 in z table we get our critical value which is equal to 1.645 and here the area is left side of uh, critical value the area which is uh, called acceptance area so we don't reject this area 95 percent area is called acceptance area and 5 percent area is called uh, rejection area so uh, the value critical value which is equal to 1.645 is separate rejection um, area and acceptance area uh, on the left side uh, on the left side of critical value is acceptance area and the, on the right side is rejection area rn or area of rejection define the location of all those values that are so large or so small that the probability of their occurrence under a true null hypothesis is rather remote. This is the explanation of last slide. Note in the chart that the area where the null hypothesis is not rejected is to the left of 1.645 as I said in previous slide. We will explain how to get the 1.645 value shortly. The area of rejection is to the right of 1.645. A one tail test is being applied. The 0.05 level of significance was chosen. The sampling distribution of the statistic Z follows the normal probability distribution. The value 1.645 separates the regions where the null hypothesis is rejected and where it is not rejected. So as I said in previous slide, 1.645 critical value will separate the rejection area and acceptance area. The value 1.645 is the critical value. In step 5, we will make a decision. Fifth step in hypothesis testing is to compute the value of the test statistic, compare its value to the critical value and make a decision to reject uh, it or not. So, um, here we compare two values, uh, computed value which is equal to z value and, uh, and here z value is equal to 2.34 and uh, z value and critical value. So our critical value is equal to 1.645. So uh, on the basis of both values we reject our null hypothesis or accept. Referring to chart 10 to 1, if based on sample information, Z is computed to be 2.34, the null hypothesis is rejected at the 0 0.05 level of significance. So, our here uh, uh, level of significance is equal to 5%. Our computed value, Z computed value is equal to 2.34. The decision to reject H0 was made because 2.34 
which is uh, which is our computer value lie in the region of projection now our critical value is equal to 1.64645 so uh, our computed value will lie in our rejection area so we reject the null hypothesis reasoning that that it is highly improbable that a computed z value this is Uh, this is large due to sampling error so here sampling error is equal to 5% and our computed value will fall in our rejection area so we will reject our null hypothesis interpret the results its final step and process doesn't end with the value of sample statistic or the decision or reject or not reject the null hypothesis first of all we will make the make a statement and uh, on the basis of sample data we will accept or reject our null hypothesis what can we say or report based on the results of the statistical test in a recent speech to student the dean of the college of business reported that the mean credit card debt for college is students uh, college student is 3000 so our prior information which is equal to um uh, alternative hypothesis where mu is equal to 3000 and our um uh, sorry our null hypothesis will be 3000 and our alternative hypothesis will be doesn't equal to 3000 so here we will decide that the uh, uh, by using the sampling data that the dean statement is true or false so by using sampling data we will compute the value of z statistic and we compare z statistic with the critical value and on the basis of sampling data our z value will be will fall in our critical value so we will reject our null hypothesis because our z value will fall our rejection area so the dean statement will be fall the sample evidence doesn't support the dean statement based on the sample data so the credit card debt is different from 3000 so we will accept our um null hypothesis sorry we will accept our um, alternative hypothesis and we reject our null hypothesis so uh, the dean statement is disapproved so uh, this is also called type 1 error that is there is a small probability that the decision to reject the null hypothesis so uh, here our uh, sampling error is equal to 5% because here we take level of significance 5% so we reject our for example i research on and this is our summary of the steps first of all we will establish null hypothesis and uh, alternative hypothesis we will make assumption in second step select the level of significance which is very important step and in third step select an appropriate test statistic and uh, which is equal to uh, z formula z formula is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over under root n and in step 4 we formulate a decision rule based on steps 1 2 and 3 above in step 5 we make a decision regarding the null hypothesis based on the sample information so we will compare both values computed values and critical values in step 6 interpret the results of the test these are the references you can follow these books to prepare your lecture second step is 